uh, Mercy Bridget. Uh, um, as a Lucio, and let's say I'm like last on capping point. Um, does it matter how tall you are in the point, or do you have to be like near the bottom? To yeah, contest so it. There, there, yeah, there is a certain um, like height cap to where if you go too high, you're not gonna be able to cap a point. So you have to be. I don't know if there if there's a hard number on it. There might be though, and it might. I don't know if it's if it swaps between. I think it swaps between like payload and control because payload's taller than a control point is. But mm -hmm. I would imagine it's somewhere around like five meters up in the air maybe somewhere like between five and ten meters up um is where kind of it would kind of where you're not capping anymore so yes okay so yep same as last time i'll just be a minute or so while i'm looking for something to talk about So the last time we only talked about like Reinar for like one, I think one game or so. So we'll, we'll yeah. definitely go more in depth on him here. But I'm noticing a lot of unnecessary shielding. We'll talk about like when you should be shielding or not. But we're just kind of sitting around a lot more. I'd like to see us get more aggressive, kind of go in and do more, especially when we have shield up. But we're just kind of sitting there holding it a lot of the time here. Yep, so when you have shields and health, you want to be running in and getting aggressive, and when you don't, that's when you're backing up here. So okay. a lot of times we're just kind of sitting back shielding when we have full HP and shields and there's no reason to be. Oh. Watch the long pins. I think that might have been something I said last time, but yeah. um, you want to make sure you're not just charging too far in because that was like really, really aggressive, and yeah. then that meant that we could have died there if they turned around and shot at us. So just be careful of that. Try to have like an end wall in mind where you're pinning to. All right. So with our shield, you have mainly like five th or sorry, six to seven things you're trying to block. Um, we're not just going to be holding it up for random spam damage, but I'll talk about that when we get the chance. Nice pin. Very solid. Oh, remember that thing, things can get in the way of that, right? Yeah. So you just got to watch out for those. On top of that... So you know, one man shatters aren't going to be super valuable. I mean, they can get you some value, but typically you want to aim for two plus people with that. And that applies to a lot of ultimates, is you want to kind of aim for more than just one person with ults. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. I uh, probably got a little greedy there. Or alternatively, not greedy enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, patient, I should have said. Yeah. Oh. Try to keep your your um, fire strikes level, so you just kind of aim it at body level. Um, whereas a lot of times I'm noticing we're like kind of flicking up or down with it when we're firing it, so just keep it at a normal body level, so it's just firing straight rather than into the floor or up into the sky. <laughs> Do I have your attention yet? The payload has reached the checkpoint. This is not the end. Okay. There, just to get back to fast, so we can maybe like charge across that wide open area. Right, it's not like many people could kill us there, right? So remember, you can use it for mobility, especially like if there's no enemies around. Mm-hmm. 
just run at him and swing, right? No reason to to be to be shielding him there, right? There's you just run and swing. I'm, I'd probably say just like in general, be a lot more aggressive. Just run and swing. The only time you should well, we'll talk about the times where you shouldn't be and the times where you should be holding up shield. But in general, we're just not swinging enough, and we're just kind of sitting around shielding too much, All right? But we'll talk more in depth on that after this game's done. Hold the button down rather than just like kind of tap clicking it so you're getting kind of your max swing speed going. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure we're not walking out of, our, out of our team's line of sight. We kind of just like, there we're kind of going in 1v6. So try to stick where your team can see you and your team can help you. Make sure we're not going too deep into them. Okay. And you're charging it back faster. Right there, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Pretty spig. Alright, so let's talk about some Reinhardt stuff. So, I don't know how much we actually went over on Reinhardt last time. I think we talked about him, like, very briefly, as with, like, every character we talked about them pretty briefly. Right? We just mm -hmm. kind of... We, we mainly went over just, like, what their stuff does rather than more in-depth things. Um, mm -hmm. So, on Reinhardt, let's go slightly more in-depth on him since you, now you've kind of figured out the characters you want to go more in-depth on. So, yeah. Reinhardt, a um, couple of things. Uh, and it might be repeats, but uh, as last time, just well, even so, it's you know, still information you need to keep up and remember. So, um, when it comes to shielding, you have six things that you're mainly trying to shield. You shield when you are low. You shield when your teammates are low to save your lives, obviously. You can shield to block abilities to block ultimates because those are going to be the biggest things that can that can damage you super fast and kill you. And then you shield when you're going in aggressive and when you're backing out. <coughs> the last time you can shield is when you're shielding a lot of spam, like a lot of tons of ton of spam damage, right? When it's a big burst of damage that's coming through, you can also shield that. Now, what you don't want to shield is just all this tiny random spam damage that's just coming from people shooting normally. That's what we were sh doing a lot, and when we would just kind of sit here on the front line and just do this for like mul for like 10 seconds straight, we were just soaking up all this spam damage when it's not really needed. It probably wasn't going to kill very many people. And then, therefore, that meant that our hold shield just went down instantly every fight, right? So we mm -hmm. want to make sure we're just using it more specifically for certain things. On top of that, get aggressive right off the bat, right? A lot of times, like, we're coming into fights and we'll just kind of be like... I am shield man, right? Whereas yeah. if you're going to do... You, Reinhardt cannot just do anything in shield. Whereas if you're trying to just do this, you'd be much, be, you'd be much better off on a character like Orisa or Sigma who can shield as well as shoot and as well as use abilities, whereas Reinhardt can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. So Reinhardt wants to get aggressive. So right as the fight's beginning, go in and swing. Go go do stuff, right? Then once okay. you... Now, after you're, you're, you're low health or you're... You need, that once you you know you're getting pressured or you're low, then you can shield and back up, right? And then that's how you want to be looking to approach the fight, right? Whereas a lot of times you just kind of sat back and didn't really do very much, right? And also just make sure you're not going super insanely aggressive and running like all the way into them, which is which we did a couple times. Like we charged, like we'd go from here and we charge like into them, or we would go from here and then just like run straight into the back line. Whereas what we might want to do is just push up a little bit, get aggressive, push up a little bit more, right? We just we don't want to make you're not getting insanely aggressive right okay. now um moving on some other things noticing with our fire strike a lot of time try to keep it level with people right you want to just keep it at this level so that when you're fire striking it's just going straight and you can see how it just goes straight and goes straight and goes straight and goes straight whereas what we were doing is we'd like angle it down or up which means that it's just going to go into the floor after a couple of seconds so you just make sure okay. we're angling it kind of straight rather than up or down unless of course people are below you or above you that's different right <laughs> um now shield hopping this is slightly more advanced though i think you you know just uh, keeping it in mind as a tech to learn at some point um shield hopping is 
if you're unfamiliar, which I'm going to assume you're unfamiliar with it since you're new new to the game, right? Mm -hmm. um, shield hopping is basically a way that you can move faster while still shielding. So um, obviously when you're just kind of walking around and shielding, you move super slowly, right? Um, but when, if you're trying to approach, like if you're trying to push in faster while still shielding, or you're trying to back out fast while still shielding, you can do what you call shield hopping, which is basically I'm going to press W, jump, and then right as I'm landing, I'm going to shield, and I'm going to just do that over and over again. I'm going to let it go, and now you're noticing I'm moving a little much faster than if I was just hard shielding, um, and I'm still having my shield up, so it's still protecting me from some damage, but this means that I'm going to be moving faster in there, which will mean that overall we're taking less damage and we're not letting them spam us for as long. And then on top of that, our shield will also take a lot less damage because it's not up as much. When it's up less, that'll mean that we'll preserve it more. All that damage will just be kind of sprinkled out between everyone else, and it's not really going to be enough to kill anybody, hopefully, right? Um, and that'll just allow us to get in faster, to get into swinging range, Right, you can also use do this backwards, so that's shield hopping forwards, and then let's say we're we go and we swing, we're low health, or they start ulting. Now we can also shield hop backwards. Now, of course, if you're like if you or a teammate is like one HP or low, right, you might want to just hard shield, right? But those, but when you're getting in aggressive or trying to back out fast, though, that's when you should be using that, right? Okay. Um, additional Reinhardt text. Fire Strike, keeping in mind the Fire Strike has a cast animation, so you can start the animation here, bring it around the corner like so, right? That way you don't have to be out in the open as much while you're using it. Um, Reinhardt swinging, make sure that when you are swinging, you're not just... Are you, are you uh, streaming right now? Okay, snap! I was not streaming while that. So you were just saying, uh huh. While well, while you weren't, where well, you didn't know what the heck I was talking about, were you? <laughs> Uh, like, I thought you were just explaining it, but when you no. just said no, like this, then I was like... Oh, okay. Well, that's completely my bad. I apologize for that. Okay. Well, that sucks. Um... All right, so let me let me think through just to demonstrate some of the stuff that I was talking about. So we mm -hmm. I don't have to demonstrate the the when to shield part, but you know just make yeah. sure we're not just sitting here shielding. Instead, we're getting in aggressive right off the start. Shield hopping looks a little bit like this, where we just jump shield, jump shield, jump shield, jump shield, or we can also do this backwards. Right, this is gonna move faster than if we're just moving, trudging like slowly around with a shield. Right. Yeah. Um, fire striking. Make sure we're holding it even rather than you know just up or down unless we have to aim up or down. We can fire mm -hmm. strike around the corner by doing like by by pressing it and then turn in the corner because it does have an activation time. Yeah. Right. Now Reinhardt, instead of just swinging straight at somebody, right? Um, we want to be where if we're if we're aiming straight at somebody, well that means that. We're only hitting, damaging this one person, whereas we're not gonna be able to damage that other person who's like right next to him. Whereas if we swing our our, our camera around, we're actually gonna be able to hit more than one person. So, um, basically, what you want to do to make this really easy is just swing along with your hammer. Now, a lot of times you're just kind of tapping it, so we just kind of come from the same side every time. But you're gonna want to hold it down. That way, you get your max swing speed, right? Okay. And you're just going to go each side with your hammer, right? Side, okay. side. Side, sides, and this is going to allow you to hit multiple people with it, as so you're hitting as many as possible. Um, this will mean that while you, that you'll basically be able to hit people um, while they're even like on opposite sides of you, right? While they're just like in complete opposite directions, you'll still be able to hit them, right? Just like I just showed you. And I think that's it. <laughs> I mean, that's that. That's for now. That's that's uh, most of what we'll talk about. So you can go ahead and get into another game here. Okay. Sorry for not being able to, for, for not streaming there. It was my bad on forgetting that I needed to do that. Oh, no worries. Um, when you were talking about the shield jumping, I uh, I saw a YouTube video, so I kind of had a, an yeah. idea. And But then when you were talking about the other stuff, and you are like, um, so like, hear what I'm doing here, you said something along those lines. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah, what? Well, <laughs> that's that's, that's my uh, bad for uh, not noticing No, I'll that. good. Um... So I'll go run again here. Now, are there specific heroes that I should look for? Probably support is more important that would tailor more to Sigma or tailor more to Ryan. Which are you you're asking which supports pair better with Sigma over Ryan? Yeah. Um supports that don't do as much burst healing. So, um characters right now these supports are perfect for Reinhardt. So Sigma is what you would classify and then this is getting into like all the different um 
this is getting into like all the different compositions in the game. But Reiner is what you call a brawl character. He is big, chunky. He likes to get in on top of the enemy team. He likes to go in and get close and be fast, right? Lucio helps him be very fast, and Moria does a lot of healing because he needs a lot of healing. Sigma is not is the opposite of that. Sigma likes to play very slow and likes to, and likes to play very far away, which means that Lucio and Moria probably aren't the best supports for a Sigma, right? Whereas Zenyatta mm -hmm. or Baptiste or Mercy would be much better supports for a Sigma. Um, whereas Ana, Moria, Lucio, Baptiste would be good, so and Brig would be good supports for Reinhardt. Ana would also be pretty solid for a for Sigma as well. Alright. No. No. <laughs> Alright, well you're gonna die anyway, so that's decent. Um we'll after this game we'll talk about some better um how how you can utilize choke points of no man's land. Um, okay. or did we talk did is that something you talked about last time? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think we talked about that last time. No, no, no. Yeah, so we'll talk about that uh, um, after this game's done. Um, a lot of times I'm noticing that we're coming back like through these like weird like um, hallways. Make sure we're coming, try to go through that like wide open area. That way you can just charge out so that you're getting back faster, right? We want to be able to charge so we can get back as soon as possible. Fire strike, remember to fire strike off a cooldown. We just want to use it like every time we get the opportunity. That way we can get as much damage in as possible. Yeah, I was uh, chasing that Ryan there. I shouldn't have done that. So like right here, go out the main main. Yeah, go that one. That way we can just charge. Like right now, we can just charge and be like much much faster, right? Okay. Yeah, so we're just waiting for our team here a little bit. We. So I see a Hanzo like that, and it scares me because... Oh. And the Hanzo scares you because you think he's going to melt you? Yeah. Yeah, so... um. First off, a lot of playing out in the open there, so remember good positioning is the usage of cover, bad positioning is the absence of cover, so that's one thing that will allow you to take a lot less damage from a Hanzo, for example. The other thing is just paying attention to your health bar, because if you're very careful about your health, um, you can just plop up your shield anytime you see that, like, or let's say, for example, we see a Hanzo storm arrowing, we can just put up a shield, right? So we have that shield as an option as well. And make sure we're requesting healing or we're looking for a health pack when we're low HP, we're not just kind of chilling around. How does the uh, one request healing? How does one request healing? So I think it is by default bound to X. Um, though it could be different. Yep, so that's going to allow you yeah. to tell your, basically it tells your supports with an audio cue where in the game you are, who you are, the fact that you need healing, which just gets you healing faster. This guy is getting... Yeah, so at the very beginning of that fight, we just kind of sat around. Like, we, we, we actually did stuff that fight, and we went in swinging, but it was just late. We went in and started swinging, like, after, like, sitting around for, like, three, four seconds. So we just want to make sure we're doing it at the very beginning of the fight. The Reiner has shattered some of our teammates, so if we're going in, we can maybe, you know, stop him from killing them, create some space. Um, but by the time we're actually doing a lot, we had pretty much already lost the fight, which is what's happening a lot here, is we're losing these fights before actually able to do anything, right? Going free. Remembering to charge back there. Fire striking off a cooldown, right? So just make oh aiming at the ground, right? So oh, make sure we're aiming at but that's what I was talking about like last time. Okay. 
probably don't intentionally go in and duel a Reinhardt while he's nano. Nano boost gives uh, reduced damage as well as uh, healing when, when it's first given to them, as well as m increased damage output. So you're really not going to want to duel him when he has that. So just look to back away and run away from him instead of chasing after him, All right, which is what we did there. There, Reinhardt oh. had charged. When he's charging, he cannot shield, so that's a perfect opportunity to shatter right there. On top of that, while he's behind you, how's he going to stop you from shattering his team, right? So it's a perfect okay. opportunity to shatter, like, five people right there, had we been looking for it. So we just want to make sure we're trying to do that. Um, yeah, but it's just a lot, right now it's a lot of the engagements and, and understanding how to, like, when to push in, when to back out, when do we do what, right? Um... So now let's talk about No Man's Land and, and cover usage real quick. I'm still streaming if you want to take a look. Um, so yep. let's, let's just talk about, let's just go to that map so we can see specifically on this map. So um, we were on Junkertown. So it's right here. Let's load that up. So are you aware of yet of what a choke point Why is? Have you heard that term yet? Yeah, pretty much like a funnel yep. where... There's only one way in, one way out. Yeah, kinda. I think maybe we talked about that when we were on main. Yeah, I th yeah. I think yeah. Basically, you know, I think I think we talked about that briefly. Um, basically, uh, with choke points, we don't want to hold in front of them or in the middle of them because then we are putting ourselves in that funnel, and then that's and then doesn't it forces them not to walk into it. So you know, that's that we I think we talked about that briefly. Right? We talked about that. Um, we want to make sure we just so for example, this right here would be kind of a, a mix between a choke point and a no man's land, right? Um, you don't want to be in front of this or in the middle of this because then that's just putting us in a really bad position. Instead, we want to hold at the end of this, right? Like right here on the corner, right? That way, okay. if they're pushing through here. <laughs> Um, we let them push through and then they come to us. Now, if we're kind of same thing as with No Man's Land. So No Man's Land is any long stretch of area where there's no cover at all, right? Which is, it's, it resembles like a choke point. It's very easy to kill people in it and it's not very good to be standing in. So most of the payload path is going to be No Man's Land. So there's, if you notice, if we just follow along this, there's no cover anywhere on this payload path. Like even in this area, no cover, no cover anywhere in this area, right? That's No Man's Land. Now, um, we again, same exact thing as, as, as a choke point. We don't want to hold at the front of No Man's Land, which is where we held at the very beginning of the game. We came up here and held here. You don't want to hold at the front because now what this means is now they don't have to push through that no man's land. And in fact, if we need to back up at all, we ourselves need to push through this no man's land. As well as the fact that up here there's not a very good, there's not a lot of cover that we can use very effectively here, right? So uh, holding up here is definitely not really the way we want to go unless we're going for like a full, full spawn hold composition and like we specifically tailor our composition to. Um, for holding up here so instead we want to and again we don't want to hold in the middle of it instead we want to hold at the end of it so the end of it would be more so like towards here right where we're holding this corner now a lot of people on this map will hold this high ground and then we'll literally just give them this entire pathway until this corner because this is just such a good thing to hold here this is such a good uh choke to hold that basically the rotation will look like this where I'll, where basically we'll stand um up here We'll, you know, add in a fire strike. We'll just chill here, and we'll let them push into us. And then we'll, you know, we'll poke, we'll poke, we'll poke. We'll, you know, Reinhardt will shield. And then once they get close and, they'll, and they're starting to come up on their here, then we'll drop on this corner and we'll hold the corner, right? Okay. Well, now you might be thinking, well, Tabuki, a second ago you were telling me to get aggressive and run at people, and then now you're telling me not to run at people. What are you talking about? Well, it's different in, in different instances here. So first off, it's different on attack versus defense. On attack... You can't just sit around and do nothing because you need to go cap the point. On defense, it's different. On defense, you can sit around and do nothing because they need to come to you to cap the point, right? Therefore, you can take advantage of the good positioning. On top of that, when you're on defense, you don't want to push into, you know, on attack, like you are the one, you would be on this side and we can't just tr sit here and do nothing. Instead, we would try to put, we'd shield top through this no man's land, get as close as possible, go into them. Whereas if we're on defense here, holding this corner, um, we would basically just let them push into us, right? We would let them, we, we wouldn't come in and engage early because then we just walk into no man's land and then die. Instead, we'd bait them into the no man's land. We'd let them walk in. We'd just hold this corner. We'd fire strike. We'd shield if needed. We would just basically swing on this corner. We're not taking damage because we have the cover, the corner's protection. We're getting some swing damage in. And then once they get 
closer, so they're in the middle or they're even real close up here, then we can get aggressive. Then we can start swinging, then we can go into them, then we can push and go aggro, and we can start swinging at a bunch of things. Because we're then they're a lot closer to our bit of cover, and they're a lot more cemented into this no man's land. So it's it, that's how you want to be looking to hold these. And now these are all over the place, right? It's like it's gonna be on like every single map, right? Um, you know, same thing, like this up here is a choke point, right? This high ground, like right here is a choke, or this tiny little funnel area. All pathway is no man's land, so instead of holding all the way up there at the front, we'd hold more so maybe like on this back corner, or we'd take the high ground above there, right? Rather than holding hmm. up there in the spawn, or we'd take the high ground above them. The high ground above them would probably be a really good place to hold as well, right? Um, let's see, holding back here, right? Instead of holding on the cart up here, we would hold maybe back on the corner over here, right? Just get making them walk through this long no man's land, right? And holding this corner rather than, and then we wouldn't try to run into them. We wouldn't try to run into them. We instead we'd let them come forwards. We would just poke, poke, wait, wait, you know, swing, wait, shield, whatever. Let them come in. Then we're engaging, right? You can look yep. to go ahead and get into a queue now. Okay. Go! All right, same thing applies to Sigma. Um, on so, you know, mainly this is a tanking thing because you're the one who controls your kind of your team's uh, where your team's positioning when you're on, on tank. So this is mainly applicable to tanks, not as much so on supports. Um, so yeah, it's pretty. Much uh, I'm in a game. Okay. Traveling to Dorado. All right. So now that we've talked about a lot of that stuff, uh, we I will. Uh, are we going over? Oh no, uh, you're support now. Has a support right. now. Yeah. All right. So yeah, if we, if we ever get back to Reinhardt, I will start to just like actually start to walk you through some of that stuff um, okay. while you're playing. But since we're on support, I'll just I'll start analyzing again and kind of look at what we need just to work on here. All right, so just as a quick refresher for Lucio, last time we talked about Lucio wall riding, stay near walls, parallel to them, spam jump, hold W, look around using your camera. Um, I told you to amp more often because we kind of hold on to it. Speed when your team is trying to go anywhere or you are trying to go anywhere and then heal when you when you or your team are sitting still or need healing. And then you okay. ult to counter other ults or when people are low, you're not just holding on to them and never using it. All right, so let's just you know take a look at what things are coming up this time. Five, okay. Four, three, two, yeah, so Reinhardt's pushing in aggressive, probably want to be up there with him, right, being a little bit closer. Oh, good amp because you were low there. Okay, there, pay attention to Reinhardt because we maybe could have anti-ols for him when he was lower. There, finish off the baby diva. We kind of ran away after we demeched the diva, so make sure to just finish her off. A little bit I far also, away. Uh, Good. I also uh, bound my jump to right uh -huh. button on Lucio. Swap Found it a lot it. easier. Yeah, same with me. Alright, with those supports, you can probably get like right in on top of them unless they're getting support from teammates. Just like get really aggressive. Like Lucio acts as like an opportunist when it comes to duels because he can, he's a pretty decent duelist, right? He can go in and get some kills and some frags, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you mainly act as an opportunist. So when you see a support off on their own, when you see someone who's isolated, when you see someone who's low health, or um, they just don't, or like, you know, you have another distraction for you, then you can go ahead and get, get aggressive. So a couple of these times, their supports have just kind of been sitting off to the side. And that's where we can look to go ahead and just like get rid of it on top of them, boop them around, distract them, maybe get a kill out of it too, right? So you just maybe get a little bit more aggressive with it when we see some opportunities for it. 
Try to follow your Reinhardt around a little bit. Yeah, like if he's getting aggressive like that, go in and be with him. Okay, this fight this fight's almost over here. Um take a look at their team comp, like press tab right and go, what are we gonna be using beat for really? What what ultimate? It's... Uh probably Farah. Maybe even Genji. Probably say Farah can be a little bit hard to get the timing done because a lot of the times by the time you use your beat, she's already killed stuff. Um because it has that slow activation time. Get, probably say the two ones you want to look to use it for are the Genji Blade and the Sigma Ultimate, because those are two really powerful ultimates that B can counter very well. Okay. So I'd look to use it specifically for those two. Keep your ears open, turn around real quick. There's a Genji behind you who your team is chasing. My ultimate is charging. Greetings. My ultimate is ready. I can use some help. Yeah, I think a lot of times we're, we're misunderstanding the range for our boop. Just keep in mind it's pretty close to people and we're using it a lot of times too far away. So we'll wait till we're closer. But when we are closer, use it, just use it as often as possible because X is really consistent sources of damage. Look to add in as many boops and melees as possible. <laughs> Oh, let's break it. Oh, pretty solid beat. Okay, so that you know went pretty well. I don't think that there was a ton there that went wrong. Um, when I probably say we can talk slightly about dueling people a little bit more. So okay. as Lucio, you can look to get in on top of people and duel people. I even have in the past gone over like Overwatch League, um, va like a uh, perspectives on Lucio players on, and um like. Uh, so I watched like one specific one with these guys where I show them, okay, um, this this Lucio, right, constantly is com contesting their DPS. So he doesn't, you know, what what he does is, it, it'll, it was like a Reaper and a Doomfist, right, on the enemy team. And what he would do is he the Reaper would TP behind his team, his team's up here, enemy team mm -hmm. over there, right? His Reaper, the Reaper would TP back. He would just go boop the Reaper away, shoot at him, and then just be back with the team. Now, he's just, he did do that over and over and over and over again, right? And he would even, he was killing like the Reaper more time, like more times than the Reaper was able to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just because he was just going in, booping him away, distracting him, not allowing him to do anything. Kind of same thing with their Doomfist as well. Um, and then it is the kind of thing that you want to be looking to do as Lucio, right? Because you can go in and get on top of people, secure kills, or even if you're not securing kills, you can be a distraction and just boop them out of position, make it hard for them to do things. So I want to see you like get, being slightly more aggressive. No, I don't want to see you feeding, and I want you to, you know, your team's here, enemy team over there, and I don't want you to see, or I guess better example, right? Enemy team's over there, your team's here. I don't want to see you just like running in and 1v4ing, right? Or 1v6ing or whatever. Instead, I want to see you looking for opportunities. So wait till, you know, like I said in game, um, wait till you see people who are low or out of position, get a little bit closer on people. Your boop range, let's talk about that real quick. Right, we are often using it way too far away. We're trying to use it like back here. It does not reach that far. It's more so like five meters, I believe, is the max range. So that's like yeah. right here where you can boop somebody. I think if we move just an inch this way, now we're not gonna be able to boop them, maybe. No, we can, okay. So I think it's maybe caps at like eight -ish, seven or eight, eight meters. Eight meters so yeah. yeah, somewhere around here. Because now we can't, right? So it's like seven or eight meters somewhere where it caps out. Whereas we're trying to use it a little bit too far away. When you are within that range, use boops and melees as often as possible as they um, act as a very consistent source of damage for, for killing people. So very easy to land and it's going to add in very easy damage, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's really the, the it. Just look to get a little bit more aggressive in on top of people, especially like their supports and DPS. Now, probably don't do that as much on tanks. Um, at, Unless a tank's low or, you know, or you're trying to boop them around, but you can contest supports and DPS very easily. Um, just don't kill yourself while you're doing it, right? Okay. Go ahead and get into a queue there. Okay. Do you want me to specifically go for support or tank? No, uh, up to you. Whichever one you want to go over. 
Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I usually just oh, queue both, yeah. but uh, like I know you mentioned, you wanted to go more in depth on Ryan. Oh, I mean, it's, it's it's up to you. I mean, like we, I was just saying, if we did go back to Reinhardt there, then okay. I can t like a uh, that. What usually what I do is like I, you know, I'm I'm looking at for the first thing I do every session is like I'm looking at like okay what are the things that they're doing wrong but then once we establish these are the things you're doing wrong then we can i can like while you're playing give you reminders like say okay this is where you want to get aggressive this is where you want to play passive N make sure like you know watch your positioning hold over here not over there it just like kind of give you those reminders so you can kind of see it in game i'm sticking you by the way okay welcome to paris Commencing in 30 seconds. There's nothing I haven't seen before. Stick together. We will complete our mission. So yeah, for the most part, basically positioning-wise, we're just going to be following around our Reinhardt and or tanks, or the at least the main clump of our team where the most people as possible are, unless we see an opportunity to go do something else, right? Then we can leave them. All right, that's just okay. kind of what we're going to be doing. Attack commencing. I Probably no need to amp because you might want that amp for when you need to get past the choke point here, right? Where that's where you, your team probably wants the most speed. That way they don't have to sit in it as long, right? Yeah. Just make sure we're getting out of the choke point. We don't want to be sitting in there for too long. Ball's low. You just go push him. Yep, go super aggressive. Now you're up a bunch of people. You can be like amp speeding, get your team to just in there going to do things. Oh, that was a mistake. Boops and melees, right? Just get in on top of her. Um, very significant advantage. Just go in and get back. Or you don't be afraid to play, unless it's a character that um, excels at close quarters. Don't be afraid to get right, right in on top of them. So like, you know, stay away from McCree who has a flashbang. Stay away from Brig who has a bash. Stay away from Reaper who can, you know, melt you when you're right next to him. But, you know. Oh. Yeah, I guess they have some people contesting, don't they? But, I mean, you can get in all you want on Mora. Go in as aggressive as you want on Lucio, on Tracer, on, on Hanzo, right? Just because they don't have anything at close range that can contest you. Push on. And go from spam for spam shots there. We went a long period without shooting at all. Just want to basically just be constantly shooting to just so we can get more ult charge, do more damage, just get shots out there. Hey, let's pick it up. I'll feel sad in the morning. Nano boost is ready to deploy. I can use some help. And we got a pick. Yep, just speeding our team in. Once we get like closer here, we can like amp speed. All right, so like here if we're chasing sorry, we amp speed into her or amp peels for the Reinhardt. And still possibly winnable here, right? So we can. Oh, a little bit. And I with wasted it. Yeah. Yeah. Once you're pulsed, um, I think if you're pulsed, you have to do it like immediately. You can't wait at all. Like I think you can technically get a beat off, but it has to be like really fast. Just remember that it has a cast time, right? Yeah. Nice sand peels. Go aggressive, we're up picks, right? Go like a contest the people on like high ground, for example, right? The Zenyatta. Or you kind of walk past them. <laughs> oh. Make sure we're just watching the McCree right there. If we're being aware of him, we can um, speed and run away from him. We have amp there. We can boop him. All right, a lot of different options. Make sure we're like you know behind our teammates. Just basically just be careful of his flashbang because there we could 
possibly have survived there if we didn't. Pay attention to how many teammates you have alive. Yep, there you go. Even if you, you know, you have one person on point, that's a lost fight, right? Just we, we talked. I think we talked about that last time. Yeah, um, we talked about kill feed, how to watch kill feed, and yeah, I did. Okay, so I was just checking the notes real quick, right? So he talked about kill feed, how to tell whether you're winning or losing. So just watch the, you know, watch your team through the walls, see how many people do we have there. If you only have one person there, that's a lost fight. Just back up. Okay. Um. Keep in mind sometimes you don't want to just boop people to boop people like it has to be the boop has to come with a reason so for example there booping the enemy reinhardt away probably was counterproductive because your team could have killed him very easily while he was on the ground so it actually kind of saved him there right um mm -hmm. so we want to make sure we're just not booping for no reason but we're booping someone when they're out of position to do damage um when they're like low health right there's a bunch of reasons why i can't boop Oh. oh, get out. No, kind of roll. Yep, so here the Reinhardt's low, so we can maybe like get up behind him, right? What is that Melee when you're right on top of him. Oh. Push off. <gasps> Sometimes we tend to be like losing track of people when they're still on our screen, so that's just awareness that we need to work on. Yeah, so we need to work on our awareness and just paying attention to what's going on around us. Like, a lot of times we just will lose track of people. So, like, for example, there, we were, like, staring and shooting at the Lucio. He got shattered and, like, went below our vision. And we were just, and then we just completely forgot that he existed, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So we just, you know, want to remember that people don't just disappear. So if you just saw them a second ago, look around real quick. They're probably around you, right? They people don't just not exist anymore, right? So we want, if we're shooting at someone and we know they were just there a second ago, the odds are they're still somewhere near you. So just look around, look around for them. The same, the same thing happened on Lucio, happened on the Zenyatta, where you know we went up to the high ground to chase the Zenyatta and he dropped the point and we just completely lost track of him. So listen, watch, pay attention. Right? That way we're not making poor decisions. Pay attention to the kill, to the timer because there me probably needed to touch. I probably say with your Lucio gameplay, everything is actually looking pretty solid for the rank that you're currently at. Now, of course, it's not perfect by any means, but when you're at a lower rank or you're newer to the game, um, you're not going to be punished for nearly as much things and it's not going to be readily apparent what you're struggling with. But for the most part, I think we're doing things fine for the moment. We're amping at decent times. We're speeding and healing in decent moments. Beat was okay. I think there's one time there where we beated when, like, I think maybe we tried to beat, but it was our flux, not their flux. Um, so we just want to pay attention to when beats needed, right? Not just beating randomly, um, paying attention to our environment. I think there's a lot of awareness things at the moment. Yeah. Some, sometimes, or like there, we would like amp heals too late when our Reinhardt was going, like was low health. So pay attention to when Reinhardt's low or, and not just when he's low, but also when he's in danger, right? So just when he's charging in straight into their team, that might be a danger moment. So you might want to be with him to just be really ready on the amp heals for it. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say one of the, the things that you could look to practice on to have more of a carry impact, like, you know, carry potential is just more of that DPSing and dueling as that's mm -hmm. going to be how you as, you know, if you just exist with your aura, right, that's how you just 
that, that's how you that's how you exist. That's how you do your job on Lucio. Whereas if you're trying to win games and carry and in win in ranked, or you're trying to you know have a big impact, you're going to get that on Lucio by being able to do a whole lot of things by going and con and killing people, by contesting people, by distracting people, right? Because Lucio can do that pretty easily. So we just want to look to do that more often, and I probably say that's where you're going to find a lot of um a lot more value out of that, right? Okay. Uh, can you just give me a sec? My dad just called me and, uh, yeah. okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sure. Yep. Go ahead. Hey, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, no problem. All right, so yeah, we have like ten more minutes of this, and then we can look to go ahead and get into the playtime. Okay. Or actually, uh, it's up to you. Do you want to? Uh, I don't think we need as much. Again, it's it's a lot of mm, I'm trying to think. Um. All right. Um. Actually. If you want, you can go ahead and leave that game, and then we can go over, like, the... Because we're... Yeah, we have 10 minutes left. So, if you want, you can go ahead and leave the queue, right? Um, we're actually okay. going to just do a... Go over the main points. We didn't go over this last time because we were going over a lot of odds and ends thing things. Mm -hmm. But here, now that we're kind of centralized, we only went over two different characters, Reinhardt and Lucio. Let's go over more so... We'll go over what are the main points you want to look to work on. And then, um, uh, after that, we'll also just do a quick review of the stuff. And then, finally, we'll just kind of... Um, I'll open up for questions. And then that, those questions will extend into the, the you know the other time as well. All right, just okay. feel free to ask as many as you want during that time. Um... So here, basically, on, uh, let's see, what was the number one thing? We mm, thinking through, I'd probably say the number one thing over everything was our awareness slash aggression on both Lucio and Reinhardt. We just weren't too sure, you know, what was going on around us and when should we be going in versus when should we be backing out. So there was a lot of stuff to pay attention to, so listing off a couple of the awareness ones, paying attention to kill feed, so we tell whether or not we're winning or losing fights, making sure we're not walking back in when we're losing fights, um, making sure that we are paying attention to our health and making sure, you know, we're healing, we're requesting healing when we're low or on Lucio healing, just flat up healing yourself. Um, and then looking for like health packs as well, right? Get more passive when you don't have health and be more aggressive when you do have health. Um, pay attention to your shield on Reinhardt. Pay attention to where is our team, where is the enemy team. Like pay attention, make sure like your Reinhardt's not like um, charging in and you're not aware of it, right? You want to be like kind of ready for him to go in aggressively, right? Um, that way you can be there with him, Stay, try to stick with them. Um, pay attention to where your team's at and where the enemy team is at. That's going to give you increased, in, uh, you know, increased awareness, like so that McCree can't just like roll in on top of you. And then there was a lot of times where people just leave our line of sight. Like for example, like we'd just be like booping this guy around, shooting at him, and then like all of a sudden like we would do this, and then we'd just be like, oh no, this bot no longer exists, right? Um, yeah. Like we would just kind of not know where they went. Like we were shooting at a Lucio, and then he got shattered, and he like went underneath our, our perspective, and then we just didn't, we just ignored him, right? Whereas if, he, if we were looking at him, we probably just could have, ha you know, headshot him a couple times, right? Killed him like very easily. So we just want to pay attention to our environment, get better at paying attention so we know what's going on around us, and then that'll allow us to make better decisions, right? Um, aggression, make sure we're going aggro, like at the start, you know, at the start when we have health and we have, you know, we have no reason to play passive on defense you can be slightly less aggressive just make sure you're not like going in and feeding into like six people or you don't go too overly aggressive um in so then moving on um let's see what are some other things there um i think that's it for now moving on to your number two thing let's see what was number two probably say I'm trying to think through this number two probably would say Mechanics, isn't it? 
probably s would say is in between your ability usage and ultimate usage. Let's go with ultimate usage because I think especially on Lucio, we're starting to do a little bit better with your ability usage. So ultimate usage, we didn't really get a whole lot of value out of our ults. Like on Lucio, we beat it. I saw like a couple beats. Like one of them we didn't do anything with. Another one we didn't do anything with. I think one of them we did a, a bit with, right? One of them was pretty good timing. Um, and then shatter, we tried to shatter and didn't hit anything. And then we shattered and got like two people. So just shattering more people, getting more, you know, attempting to get more people in our ultimates rather than just going for one person, being more ambitious with it. Um, beat, make sure we're like paying attention to things that can, and that's, that's part of being aware. Pay, part of being aware of our surroundings is, um, is paying attention to like what ults do we have to counter, right? So, um, their team compositions, like paying attention to big ults, like big ults the Lucio B can counter are Shatter, um, Sigma Flux, Grav, it can counter like a uh, Echo Copy or whatever, right? It, like anything, Blade, um, it, can, ca it can counter a little bit, Mail, it depends on how many people are in it. Um, you know, there's a, you can counter a far reaper if you're fast enough with it, right? Um, it can counter, I think that's, those are the main ones that you'd look to use it for, right? Um, and then that, that way you're not dying to them, right? It's just, it acts as a defensive ult. Pay attention to when people, that's another part of paying attention to team, your team is paying attention to like when your team is low and if they're in danger or not. So, you know, when to heal them, when to beat for them. So pay attention to that as well. Um, mm -hmm. now moving on to abilities, um, Probably say, uh, well, this one will do separately between Lucy and Reinhardt, but, um, Crossfade, I think we're, we're, we're understanding when to speed in, um, and heal at different times. I think, I think, of course, like, the, I think at the moment we're just getting used to it. I think we know when you're, we're using it wrong at the very least, and we, we, we seem to understand when we should be using it. So that one's looking pretty solid. There's just some inconsistencies, uh, here and there where we're just used at the wrong times, um, right? Or we're speeding when we mean to be healing. Um, Amp, I, I like to, sometimes I think we're a little bit slow with it, though again, much better than last time. We're just getting used to how we're using the ability, but we want to make sure we're not holding on to it, right? And we're, uh, or and we're not, not not holding on to it. We're just we're not we're, we're being ready for people in danger, so we can like amp heals, especially when people are low. Um, boop, make sure understanding the range on it and they're using it mu using boops and melee much more often when we're in on top of people and being aggressive. Um, Reinhardt with his his abilities, fire striking off a cooldown. Make sure fire strikes going level and not just into the ground or in the air. Charging um, when we're charging at people, do close charges or do long charges if there's no enemies or if we're coming out of spawn. Shielding six things that, that you want to or seven things you want to block when we are low, when our team is low, when we are blocking ults or abilities, when we are pushing in aggressively or backing up and when it's a ton of spam damage but don't just block any old random damage that's coming in because that's not going to do anything right um <laughs> shield top when you're going in aggressive or when you're backing up um and then let's see what else is in there um besides that i think those are the, the main ones make sure we're just not we're not sitting there hard shielding but we're getting aggressive and doing things again right that kind of goes into where the aggression aggression at the top at the top um, mm -hmm. finally, the last one would be positioning. Honestly, all these are pretty even because you're new to the game, right? So ob obviously you need to work on all these, but that's kind of the yeah. rough order for now. Positioning, of course, still needs a lot of work. Um, want to make sure not on the open, so we're using good cover usage. Good positioning is the usage of cover. Bad positioning is the absence of cover. And then the other one is, um, we talked about was, uh, choke points and no man's land usage, right? Make sure we're not holding in the front or in the middle of choke points and no man's land, but instead we're holding behind them, right? Um, and... That, and letting them kind of walk into us and holding on them, right? Um, and then those are the main ones. Swing around here with your camera on Reinhardt. And then that is pretty much it. That's kind of the priority in which you want to use them. So we can, we, we still have a couple minutes here. We can look to maybe do like one more of coaching and then do, and then after that we can play? Or, or do you want to just play now? It's up to you. Uh, we can do one more coach and then play. I don't mind. All right. Go ahead and get into a queue then. Uh, so I have a question. Yep. So let's say that we get like a number advantage, um, like a six v four or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that ends up being like a six v two or a five v three or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know that you could finish off the team. Would you rather wait until the other people 
are kind of like on the way to finish the team or should you just push to finish as early as possible um like push you push on your own well it really depends on the situation right like it depends on how many like and that's going to be the answer to a lot of different questions that it's situational um if it's like one to two people honestly you probably push on your own um you know it depends on how low they are do they have you know how much uh, are they in really close to their spawn are they you know, do they have their abilities to kill you um if you're you know if you're lucio or reinar that might be different as well like reinar you might have more health lucio you might have to be a little bit more careful because you're only 200 health um right so it's going to be really dependent on the situation but as a rough rule you can get more and more aggressive and do those aggressive pushes as you have um more as they have less people and then on top of that you probably oh what is the Reindar doing <laughs> and then on top of that you probably just in general it is usually be a good idea just to let your team come with you if possible okay so they have a hog and a, and a McCree that we have to watch out for so right now we're just the first thing we're paying attention to is team compositions right Reinhardt and we're just calling them out in our head that way we can tell what they're on uh, by the way I'll be talking a little bit more just so I can you know so you know what you're working with. Ash, we can look to contest her really easily. So anytime you see an Ash and she's on her own, you can look to go ahead and because you can headshot her super easily. Moira, we can do the same thing with as well. Brig and McCree, you got to watch out for and watch for the hog cooks as well. So just pay attention to the characters that you can contest. Look to go contest those guys. They're just got a little bit too aggressive. We're not in the best positioning there. Um, I'd probably say something we can do, like when we come back here, for example, is if we see Ash is on the high ground, we can go contest her, and then once we kill her, then drop tier team, right? Because she's, you know, she's a, someone who we can contest pretty easily, so you can look to go take her out and then help your team out. Here, we're down a lot of people, so probably want to be like looking to play back up, right? And just group up with their team. Maybe take the high ground while you have the time. All right, but now the fight's lost, and so now we we're just basically waiting for our team to group team to group up. When you're trying to get up, um, try to put yourself into a corner and just look straight up. Right? That's gonna help you climb the fastest. Okay. Ooh. All right, so we're looking at team comps again. We have B. Yeah. Is there anything on their team that we're going to want to save our ultimate for, specifically? Uh, McCree, probably. Um, McCree ult. E Even though it's pretty easy to dodge because he yells it. But... Yeah, you, you can use it for McCree ult, but I probably wouldn't say it's an ultimate um... that you need to hold it for. Again, probably wouldn't say it's an ultimate that you need to hold it for. Oh, let's break it. Damn! Oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. So, in fact, on their team, I'd probably say there's no ultimate that you specifically need to hold it for. So I would just use it anytime your team needs it, right? So if you see, if you see, oh, get super aggressive, right? You're winning this fight. Just go in and get on the moron. Speed after her, right? Speed, speed. Run at her. Allow me to repair the oh, yeah. Good, good melee. Right, so on there. Yep. Good kills. Ryan's very low in there if you get the opportunity, right, to just go push him or Roadhog is as well, right? There, the, the things are just so low. You can just run and punch him, right? Alright, so, um. Looking again at. No, oh, I guess we're still killing them. <laughs> Looking again at their team composition, right? They, I probably would say that they don't have any ults that we specifically need to hold B onto. So just use it whenever it's needed, right? So whenever you see a bunch of people are in danger, or maybe one of their ults is specifically doing a lot, right? Oh. Then we can use B, right? Enemy. 
Nope. A little bit too out in the open, too far ahead of your team, yeah. too aggressive, right? There wasn't was, there wasn't an opportunity there. Just we, that one was the too aggressive. But so far, I like I like that we're getting a little bit more aggressive. We're doing things. I think you're starting to see some of the value out of it too, because we've been getting a yeah. lot a lot more kills, and then we're therefore we've been winning a lot of fights off of that. So, um, I, I've already started to see you being more aggressive, but. You know, we just want to look to- oh! Oh, watch the kill feed, right? Walking back yeah. in when we're down our entire team again, right? So wait for your team to group up, then we can go back in. When we're coming back here, let's, let's watch for that, right? We can see, like, do we have our team? Yeah, most of them are there, right? One, two, three, four people are there, so we can- we can go in and help out. Try to stay in the corner, right? Just- just spam- spam jump while you're in the corner, right? No, hold it down. Yeah, McCree's low HP. Right, so just, we're just keeping track of those low HPers because we can take those out pretty easily. Yep, if possible, just backing up if we can. Yeah, got a little bit too close to him, so watch out for it. Just try to stay out of his range. When you see a grab, try to get right up on top of that, because if you boop a melee, that's hitting every single person in the graph, right? It's hit, so your your boop is going to boop and hit sit five people there, right? And your melee is going to hit five people there. Uh, so here I think there's just a lot of being out of sync with the team, a lot of just not paying attention to the kill feed, and then therefore we're mismanaging some of our aggression. So just keep in mind there are times to get aggressive, and there are times to play passive. So you just want to identify those times. Yeah, I'm just getting a little excited. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No. Yeah. Listening for that, right? Oh, Making sure that we're not clutch, walking clutch. on the open. Oh, we were doing so well. Yep. And then we never got a chance to use our beat as well, right? So there we could have used our beat. Making sure we're not walking on the open, so we're keeping our ears open. Right? And then basically same stuff applies. Where there was just... The main thing is just getting... Um, the, the main point is just awareness and aggression. It's just... And those, kinda, those two kind of go hand in hand. When you're being aware of your surroundings, you're going to be able to manage your aggression better. All right. Mm -hmm. Would you like this uh, this part to be par I, I recorded along? Do you feel like you're gonna have a lot of questions that you want to ask, and do you want the questions to be recorded too? Uh, I I don't really have many questions to be honest. You All you right. answer a lot as I go. Sounds <laughs> good. Ask them. So then I'll just.